Joining us now, City Councilor for Waverly West, Janice Lukes. Janice, it's been a while. Good afternoon. Oh, that it has. That it has. Good afternoon, <laughs> Hal. <laughs> uh, nice to have you on. I always enjoy chatting with you. Um, so, listen, Mayor Bowman was on the start this morning with Macklin, McGarry, and McNabb, and they asked him about the governance review, and he mentioned you in his reply to their question. Let me let me play the re- uh, reply from the mayor, and then and then we'll talk. You look, I've, I've been uh, leading and supporting the, the efforts for the governance review. I, I know there was an attempt by Councillor Lukes to delay it. Uh, the work that we're doing right now, but it's uh, it's proceeding. And right now, we have uh, the the governance review virtual events are planned in the upcoming month, as well as the the online survey. And I, I would just invite listeners to to visit Winnipeg.ca to participate and provide their input. Um, we've made changes. Continue to look for where we can make positive changes going forward. And um, I'm I'm waiting to hear back from Winnipeggers as part of the the public engagement, and and we'll dive more into the report. Uh, on uh, on implementation of some of the recommendations that that make sense based on the feedback we're getting as well. Mayor Brian Bowman, Janice, were you delaying things? Well, actually, at the Assiniboine Community Committee, where his chair of finance, Councillor Gillingham, sits, and also former chair of the police board, Kevin Klein, sits, Councillor Klein, all three of us put in a request to delay the governance review for two reasons. Uh, the pandemic, it's very difficult to engage people on any topic right now. And secondly, um, there are, I think there's, I don't know, 12 or 14 other consultations, major consultations, the city's 20-year trans- transit plan, 25-year, our Winnipeg plan, many other plans going on. So we asked for a delay, and, and then it went to EPC, and it got, you know, nixed. So, so, you well, know, and, it's, and, not, it's, it's not yeah. what I was asking for the, the delay. And, sure. and, you know, in regards to him leading <laughs> in regards to him leading the charge on the governance review, uh, Councillor Wyatt and Councillor Eady brought forward this request in 2015. Uh, I supported it, and it's taken, what year is this, how? 2021? Um, so that's the leading, the leading charge on... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it got delayed, 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 delayed. Yeah. Because you see how the the governance review, ha- it hasn't occurred in over 24 years. Mm-hmm. And what will happen more than likely is there will be a shift in power. And it, it's incredibly hard to make change, period, in a bureaucracy. But it's even harder when you try and shift the reins of power. So Yeah. Well, and I, and I find it kind of interesting um, that uh, your request for a delay, which seems reasonable to me, I, I, you know, whatever, um, but it's funny that that uh, request would end up at his EPC where <laughs> you were told, no, uh, you're not going to delay this, we're going we're gonna to carry on, because EPC was part of the conversation on the start this morning as well. They were asking him, why are you still handpicking members of EPC? Um, so We'll get into that, uh, Janice. We've had this, con- you and I have had this conversation for many years now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this mayor is, is on his way out, uh, but mm-hmm. he does not seem to want to uh, give up the way he likes to do things at City Hall. Well, then it's interesting how, because he campaigned on changing it. Right. And, and even though he states that it can't be done, he must appoint, the charter states, he must appoint the executive policy members. But that doesn't mean that council as a whole can make recommendations to him. And and in every other city that, okay, so there was a, a study that was done, and there's preliminary findings that came out across cross-jurisdictional review of different gover- governance models in nine Canadian cities. Right. So out of those nine Canadian cities... Only two mayors appoint chairs or appoint people. Uh, Montreal's got 60 councillors or some crazy number, and Toronto has 26. But every other city, um, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, Regina, Toronto, Hamilton, Ottawa, Montreal, or not Montreal, and not Montreal and Toronto, and Halifax, they, the councillors work together to pick the committees to sit on, and they work with the mayor. It is a much more collaborative approach. Um, so it, it's unique. And the other thing about this uh, governance review that we've received a report on, there is no other city that was reviewed out of the nine cities that have a similar provision as Winnipeg's EPC authority. So 
everything we do, every decision we make, every every time the public comes forward to make comments or offer feedback, every major decision is channeled through EPC, and they can either veto it or not or add it. No other city does this. Mm-hmm. And another thing that's interesting, Hal, no other city allows, like reports come forward, no other city allows members of council to change reports, add or delete. And this is what happens at EPC. So by the time I get the report, or non-EPC members get the report... It's not the, the real report. Has, it's not the real report, because the mayor gets first dibs on changing things in the report. The second crack at changing the report is the Executive Policy Committee. And then by the time the public and non-EPC members receive it, it may not be the same report. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. How big, you know, here's the, here's the deal. I, I certainly have an interest in civic politics, uh, politics in general, but I keep an eye on 510 Main Street and what's going on there. I think a lot of people, their eyes kind of glaze over a little bit. Um, how important is this issue going to be in the next election when Man- when Winnipeggers are trying to pick a new mayor? Um, you know, mm-hmm. this uh, ability, uh, there has to be better communication. And I, and I'm not necessarily putting all the blame at Mayor Bowman's feet. I'll I'll say there is a communication problem at City Hall. Uh, How big is this issue going to be when Winnipeggers go to the polls again, Janice? Well, I think unless it changes, I think it will be a big issue because a governance model is a structure and process that's put in place to make decisions and allow equal representation from all uh, quadrants of the city. So residents have their counselor at the table. And that's not happening right now. And, and it's, it's one of the few cities, the only city in Canada that has this model. And I think that residents, it's a very complicated topic, right? It's not something that's like, uh, you know, where do you, where do you want to park your car in the parking review that's going on right now? It is mm-hmm. a complicated topic, but I think the important factor is that the residents aren't getting the representation, uh, an equal representation. And right. I think that's, that's important, you know, that yeah. residents have that. And, and, and we haven't reviewed it in 24 years. It hasn't changed. Look how, mm-hmm. look how we communicate. 24 years ago, how were you communicating? You weren't sending me emails and texts and all of this. We communicate differently. We we yeah. require informed, we require good information to make informed decisions. And when everything is filtered, like in 2018, there were 58 behind closed door meetings. Do you think, what do you think went on there? There's the ability to get information and the ability to influence, right? To influence your colleagues, to uh, make deals, to whatever. And half the council doesn't have that opportunity to right. to have that information. And personally, I just don't think that's right. Mm-hmm. I agree, and, and it's not right. And and uh, and as you pointed out, and this is absolutely the most important part of this conversation right now. The, the people in your ward, Janice, in Waverly West, or in Kevin Klein's uh, Charleswood Tuxedo mm-hmm. Westwood, they are not getting the same representation as. Uh, people in wards where their counselors yeah. are on EPC. And are privy to, you know, much, much more information and are, are have the ability to use their influence or seek out their priorities to, to cut deals. No other city does this, Hal. So why, and you know what, Hal, if this model made Winnipeg a superstar in their decision-making process, if if our legal bills dropped to, you know, half of what they are, then I'd support it. But you know what? It's far from the case. It's far from the case. So I think we need to get with the 21st century and update our model. Or so what is the it. best model? And your final question, because I'm almost out of hmm. time, Janice, what's the best hmm. model then? Going forward, what would you like to see happen at City Hall? I could pick any one of these uh, seven other cities that have a different model, nine other cities, where we're collaboratively working together, and it's not divisive. How would you feel, like, divided in half, half of you not getting the information and the other half have? That creates a lot of other problems, Hal. Yeah, absolutely. So. Hey, Janice, thanks a lot. I appreciate you coming on. Stay well. You too, Hal. Take care. All right. Okay, <laughs> Janice Luke, City Councilor for Waverly West.